look at that. This is a paradise if you love getting natured out. Nature. Which I do. I've got this slam poetry friend who says, Cyprus is all brigades of bronze Brexiteer boomers, burnt to biltong, brandishing books by bad buggers. And I say, oh, that's a little bit ageist, mate. And there's nothing wrong with vegetating by the pool anyway. Oh, look at these guys. These are moorhen, baby moorhens. Very resourceful little gallinules. Go on, yeah, that's it. Go, little guys, go, go. Nice one. Now, Cyprus is very enviably positioned on the crossroads of Asia, Africa, and Europe with a year-round warm climate. And as a result, it's a nirvana for life that hangs on in this arid land in the most unusual of places. Nice bit of algae there. Love a bit of algae. One of my favorite ways of getting natured out is going snorkeling. My mate Chris, he always says, snorkeling, that's just a load of fish, isn't it? And I say, well, yeah, Chris, but at the end of the day, we're all just a load of fish. Fish that come from a long line of fish that made increasingly bad life choices. What's wrong with just swimming around all day, no job to go to, instead of flopping about onto land, evolving arms and legs? and making a great big mess of everything. And he usually goes, yeah, oh, so. Of course, if I was to tell Chris that I've come to Cyprus to go snorkeling in a river, he'd probably be even more perplexed. Even I'm a bit surprised, but look at it, it's beautiful. A succession of ancient civilizations from the Bronze Age to the Roman Empire claimed this jewel of an island for themselves over the millennia, leaving nothing but shards of pottery amongst the multicolored pebbles. The ancient Greeks looked upon this place and they thought that somewhere so lovely would have to be the birthplace of Aphrodite, the goddess of beauty. It's not hard at dawn to cast yourself back to the golden age of heroes. Maybe spot a Trojan trireme emerging over the horizon. There's a place down the coast on the edge of the Akamas that they call the Barbs of Aphrodite, which kind of does what it says on the tin. I heard someone say it's a bit of a dank grotto, but I thought that had been a bit unfair, because it is quite nice. But I look at this place, where the river meets the sea, and you hear the lapping waves and the giant cane is swaying in the gentle breeze, and you think, Actually, this is a place that much better befits the chilling out spot of a goddess. You can really imagine how the politics of Olympus and Zeus being a bit of a pain would soon melt away as you immerse yourself in these clear, tranquil waters. Now, I don't know about you, but I've always wanted to get in touch with my inner goddess. So I brought my snorkel with me. Uh, I think I'm going to give it a go. Let's do it few fish down here I bet, a few little uh, fry maybe, shoaling about, let's have a look, okay, oh my god, it's full of mullets, I love mullets, look at this, there's hundreds of them, this is amazing, mullet aren't flashy, they're not all, look at me, they're just hardy little silver bullets going about their business, Everywhere. being super successful, You'll find these flathead mullet, or one of the other 78 species, just about anywhere where the sea meets the land. Lagoons, estuaries, harbours. Hey, who's that? Get out of it! A big part of the secret of their success is their adaptability. Glistening water hogs. They're like the boar, the pigs of the sea. They'll eat anything. Oh, look, look, see, he's going for some bread. I don't know who put that bread there, by the way. Might be me. But I tell you, they do that on the Blue Planet too. They just don't show it. I met this well-known TV wildlife presenter at a Happy Hardcore Revival night a few months back, and he, he put his hands on my shoulders and spanned me right round, looked at me with saucer-wide eyes, and I shouted, oh mate, it's not just the Red Bull, but I love the Blue Planet. And he just shook his head and he leant in and whispered to me, lies mate, it's all lies, it's just us, fruit, bread and fish. An unkillable superorganism, mullets, that is, not Attenborough. Imagine it, mooching about, swimming around with all of your pals, living your best life, 
hoovering back gutfuls of detritus. I mean, it sounds brilliant, right? Oh, what's this? Is it a perch? Is it a trout? No, these are sea bass. Still got some of their spots, which means that they're still quite young. When they get older, these could get up to about a meter long. If the mullet, the boar or pigs, these guys are the wolves of the pool. Voracious little predators, fish eaters, hunters. You can kind of tell by their demeanor, they're, they've got that slightly aggy vibe about them. When the time is right, both the bass and the mullet will return to the shallow sea to spawn, laying thousands of eggs that will mature into tiny plankton and then fry, some of which will return to these pools to find shelter in the shallows, in the maze of thickets of roots that line the margins of this pool, where the hungry mouths of the bass cannot penetrate. Beyond even the sun-dappled, sandy-bottomed shallows where the fingerling mullet congregate, you can spy silvery shoals of tiny fry. If you've ever been into your aquaria, and these really look at first glance a lot like tetras, but when you look at them closer and they stop for a moment, you can see the family resemblance, that chirpy mullet demeanor. I have a little look around, not sure if I should get out yet. I'm starting to get a tiny bit chilly. No, no wait, gotta have another look. There's one more group of little fish that I've spotted in amongst the Amazonian roots and tendrils, using them as cover. And I, I need to get a good look at them. Okay. Now, who are you? These guys, these are mosquito, well, girls, should I say. Oh. They're mosquito fish. Off he goes. Now mosquito fish, like a lot of the fish are in and around Cyprus, aren't actually from here. And I'm not judging, because I'm not either. But because they have a reputation for eating mosquito larvae, hence the name, they were brought over from their native southern United States and introduced to a lot of places around the Med where they've done very well indeed, often at the expense of native species, like one of Cyprus's only native freshwater fish, the Mediterranean killifish, a relative of the mosquito fish and its ecological equivalent here, and it's now restricted to a few locations in Cyprus. The female mosquito fish are a little bit larger and they have the black spots on their bellies and they give birth to huge numbers of live young. These are from the same family as fish like the black mollies and platies and guppies that you'll often find in aquaria and if you've kept any of those before you'll know how easy it is to have them breeding even if you're a terrible fish keeper like I was when I was about eight and it's almost impossible to stop them. And in typical law of unintended consequences style it turns out that they actually eat a lot of things that are better at eating mosquitoes than they are. And despite this, it's nice to see them here. It's a little bit like snorkeling in the Amazon or in a giant aquarium. And to be honest with you, there could easily be nothing alive in here at all, so I'm not complaining. Right, I am actually getting a bit chilly, so I'm going to get out of here now. In the next All Natured Out Snorkel Chronicle, I'm going to be looking at the amazing array of life that lives just off the shoreline here in Polis, Cyprus. So make sure you come back for that one. <laughs>